Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you here. Judge rejects XRP ruling. We got new lawyer joining Ripple team, settlement or appeal. We got John Deaton, Jeremy Hogan, David Schwartz, and Stuart Alderati to lay it all out for us. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content at the top of the screen. Right now, cryptocurrency market cap is $1.21 trillion. It's off by 1.61% in the last 24. 28,800 plus for Bitcoin, 1,800 plus for Ethereum, 83.9 billion plus for Tether, which I believe is another new all-time high for market cap for USD Tether. And we still don't know how the U.S. government department of treasury the fed feel about it well we'll find out soon enough xrp at the number five spot at 69 cents right now off by 1.24 on the 24 and almost just as much on the seven day let's get into this ladies and gentlemen it's glint want to effortlessly accumulate gold over time this is what I've been telling you about. Click the link underneath the video and do exactly what I've been doing. And over 100,000 or 200,000 people by now are doing, I tell you. Introducing Glint's repeat gold buy feature. Just simply set your buy amount, frequency, and payment method. We'll do the rest for you. Try repeat gold buy now. Now, this is something I'm about to set up on mine because I haven't done that yet, but I absolutely love owning physically allocated gold through Glint and using my MasterCard debit card to purchase things when I need to. It is a remarkable way of becoming your own personal alternative to banking. Click the link for Glint underneath the video. Find out for yourself. Well, here we go. SEC sues Richard Hart from Hex and Pulse Chain and Pulse X included in securities violation is section 17 which is fraud ladies and gentlemen shout out to sherry empress for this news the allegations are vastly different than what was alleged in the ripple case ultimately things could go very differently here for richard hart so uh look i mean when we think about this uh, the news came through on CoinDesk that the SEC was, in fact, filing a lawsuit against Richard Hart, the founder of Hex and Pulse Chain Projects, alleging that he raised over $1 billion in unregistered security sales and defrauded investors. I saw that one coming. And to Jeremy Hogan's point here, Jeremy Hogan said, I think it was, uh, you know, when you see him all decked out in the Louis Vuitton gear, you know, this is very tough for a lawyer to defend. You know what I mean? And I want you to hear just the first few seconds of this, of what Richard Hart says here. Any of you guys from the SEC are listening. I hope you are. I want you to know from the deepest, deepest parts of your heart that I've saved a lot more people from being wrecked than you have. Because I did everything I could to prevent people from putting their money into BlockFi. Did you? I did everything I could to prevent people from putting their money into Celsius. Did you? I did everything I could to put people in charge of their own keys and get them to have self-custody. Did you do that? I called the top on the day. Did you? What have you done? So well, let me tell you what they've done. They've sued you is what they've done. And what we're hearing here out of Richard Hart right now is what's called the fantasy phase. It's when you think your opinion still matters and it will somehow stave off or rationalize away a government agency like the SEC from taking action against you. When the reality is, is you should stop talking to the media and influencers and get a lawyer. Speaking of getting a lawyer here, shout out to Ashley Prosper and James K. Filen here. The Ripple team adds on a new one. Remember, we just had someone leave, and Douglas Zolkind is coming in here of Du Bois and Plimpton has filed an appearance on behalf of Ripple Labs here. Uh, 
He has extensive trial experience, ladies and gentlemen. As Ashley Prosper says here, it looks like Ripple's preparing to take this to trial. And what a great addition to the team Douglas is with his extensive trial experience. This does not mean a settlement could not or cannot be reached. It just means Ripple, as usual, is preparing 589 steps ahead. Shout out to James and Ashley for that. And I asked a question here, are we headed to trial or settlement? You know, Mr. I says, we're going to settlement. You know, this thing's up in the air for me. You know, I've always believed that this thing's gonna to go the distance to the Supreme Court. A lot of that because we know how important XRP is to the financial system as a bridge currency. And if it really is going to be used for its full scale intended use case, I've always believed that it would need to go to distance to have that level of legal clarity at the Supreme Court level. Now, a settlement would be great too. I'm not turning it away like I don't want it. I just think that it's going to go to distance. But if we get a settlement, it could speak very big to XRP specifically and not so much for the rest of the crypto space. Now, speaking of the rest of the crypto space, let's talk about this. There was a recent ruling in the Terra Luna case, and it was the judge basically rejecting on its face Judge Torres's decision and ruling over XRP. Let's start here understanding that. John Deaton said, shout out to John, I'm getting a lot of questions about the Terra Luna judge's rejection distinction from Torres' decision. I'm traveling and haven't read the ruling. Earlier, I said a judge from the same district might be hard pressed to openly disagree with Judge Torres. This judge apparently, I'm gonna open this up here, this judge apparently wasn't so hard pressed. This is the very nature of litigation. I'll comment more after I've read the decision, but know this, Judge Torres was applying the Howey factors to indisputable facts at a summary judgment, not a motion to dismiss. And to that point, Mark Fagel, former securities lawyer here uh, and, and official, said here, you're absolutely correct that one can't compare a motion to dismiss to summary judgment. Summary judgment has evidence based on the judgment. Motion to dismiss, the facts aren't in. There's no evidence and facts that are really being placed in. So it says, but someone who had concerns about Torres's reasoning is comforting to see I'm not alone. By the way, Rakoff is not a fan of the SEC, albeit historically has had concerns about them being inadequately aggressive. Now, they go on to have a conversation there, but what I want to do is I want to show you something very quickly here, and it is right here. If you remember, <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't make this up. I did an interview with Meta Lawman, and shout out to him for catching this and bringing it back up and posting today. If you're not following Meta Lawman, Attorney James Murphy, you need to be doing it. We sat down and had an interview, and this was about the case for the SEC versus Ripple. But in that conversation, this is exactly what he told us. And I've been in many courts where I am citing a judge in the next courtroom in, in New York, in Manhattan. And you can tell, I don't know if this name means anything to you, but there's kind of a, now I'm not actively pra practicing law. I can say stuff like this. There's <laughs> kind of a renegade judge named Jed Rakoff, and he kind of like to disagree with the judges down the hall on a on an identical issue um no, okay i don't know if he liked to do it but he did it pretty frequently pretty frequently and, I, and there you have it and just so happens to be that is the exact judge we're talking about here jeremy hogan says what the Terra judge rakoff doesn't know is that numerous xrp purchasers submitted unopposed affidavits that they didn't know who or what ripple was when they bought xrp that's why evidence matters and there's no evidence in this case yet because that was a motion to dismiss not a summary judgment right then we go on to this right here John Reed Stark, another SEC, former SEC official here, SDNY District Judge Jed Rakoff today allowed the SEC to go forward with its case against Terraform Labs, excuse me, and founder Dow Kwan. In doing so, 
Judge Rakoff specifically rejected the distinction made in the Ripple case between public and private and is our public and institutional sale, excuse me. And you can read the decision that he's got all of this laid out. We all know the, the, the difference between the decision that came down and Judge Rakoff does not have any evidence, which is where all of this, I believe, is truly coming from here. Now, what I want to do is share this, which is Joel Katz on Twitter here. David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple, says about this ruling from uh, Judge Rakoff in the Terra Luna case. I also want to highlight out, too, that you know, this is a U.S. case against Dow Kwan and Terra Luna, who was not in the United States ever at all. Let's not lose sight of that one. But here, David Schwartz says this ruling seems to be based no some on some very unusual properties, this particular scheme and not the way cryptocurrencies generally work. None of the below the crooks of the reasoning here applies typically uh, to, to typical cryptocurrencies as far as I can tell. And what he says here, as a part of this campaign, a part of this campaign, the defendant said that the sales from purchases of all crypto assets, no matter where the coins were purchased, would be fed back into the Terraform blockchain and would generate additional profits for all crypto asset holders. These representations would presumably have reached individuals who purchased their crypto assets on the secondary market and indeed motivated those purchases as much as it did institutional investors. Simply put, secondary market purchasers had every bit as good a reason to believe that the defendants would take their capital contributions and it use it to generate profits on their behalf. So that's what we're looking at right there. He goes on to say, to be clear, the court also does make it clear that it disagrees with the ruling in the Ripple case and explains its disagreement. But oddly, it doesn't seem to have based its rejection of the ruling on its disagreement with it, but rather in the difference in facts. So that leaves the door open too. I guess I read it as somewhere between two possible things. One, worst case fa uh, for fans of decision in the Ripple case, the court is saying in the, and this is in the Dow Quan Terra Luna, Judge Rakoff, the court is saying it disagrees with the Ripple decision because it applies additional tests that are not part of the Howey test. And so it wouldn't apply and follow the ruling here. The best case for fans of the decision in Ripple, the court is saying it disagrees with the argument that it should follow the Ripple decision because the reasoning relied on in Ripple makes sense, not because it directly implicates the Howey factors, but because it indirectly implicates them due to facts not applicable in this case. To put it another way, he says here, the court might be saying that there is no rule that secondary sales need to be treated differently from institutional sales because nothing in the Howey test says so. So if the court did so in Ripple, it is either wrong or it did so because the facts in the particular case justified the distinction and the court thinks the facts in this case don't justify such a distinction. Those are my initial impressions anyway for what it's worth. Well, we certainly appreciate those, no doubt about it. And I wanted to share here because Jeremy Hogan said in response to David Schwartz, I believe it was here, or oh no, no, Mr. John Reed Stark, he said, John Reed Stark's opinion here because he believes that Ripple's decision already in big trouble. He says here, essentially, if you read the decision that Judge Rakoff made, he says, so you're suggesting that this ruling and its distinction will only apply to XRP. Prepare for some love from the XRP community, Mr. John Reed Stark. And that is a possibility. And that takes us to the idea of settlement or appeal. And either way you slice it, however it comes down, we got to remember exactly what has been shared here by none other than Stuart Alderati, chief legal counsel, who says, let me be clear about some confusion going on in response to the federal judge in New York split another judge who earlier this month ruled the Ripple Labs tokens was not a security when sold to the public secondary market sales. 
Stewart comes out and clears this up as good as anyone else could right here. The ruling in the Terra case changes nothing about Ripple ruling that XRP is not a security. Also, the Terra case is just starting and the judge has accepted everything that the SEC alleges is true for now. Our ruling came after a full factual record developed over two plus years was presented to the court. It goes on to say, I'll let others dive into the Tara judge's comment, including his apparent misreading of the Ripple judge's reasoning. He says here, example, missing the point that secondary market traders can't invest money in anyone or anything if they don't know who they're buying it from. You know, Jeremy Hogan says, I think we need a video explaining this. And finally, he gets to say this to someone else instead of having it said to him. You know, here is, and I'm not going to play this video for you, but this is Stuart Alderati actually making a mock. What do digital... A parody. No, it's not a parody, but it is a in the style of Gary Gensler's SEC's tutorial videos is exactly what Stuart Alderati has done here. And I say, what does that say to you? Because I know what it says to me about the confidence of the decision in this case and anything that is left to discuss. Stuart Alderati and Ripple have a very strong case. You don't come out and make a mockery video of the SEC chairman unless you're pretty damn sure and more than damn sure that you're on the right side of law and the right side of history. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspective.